It's actually, this is actually built on Ruby on Rails um, with the post gist backend. Um, and then the, the ID editor, as you probably guessed, is JavaScript. Um, so uh, I guess I should, one other thing I should mention is the, the community is very um, large. There's 1.5 million user accounts. Um, thousands of people edit on any given uh, day or week um, all over the world. Uh, so there's, uh, and there's different sizes communities similar to the Python community, depending on the interest in the regions um, and countries. But that's sort of a, a basic overview. Um, and if you are interested in getting more involved, uh, we, um, we're going to be trying to do some more workshops in Jakarta. Uh, there's myself, and then there's nine other people that work on our project here. So there's lots of people very familiar with OpenStreetMap. Um, and then we've been working and training people um, sort of all over uh, to work with it as well. Um, any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, how hard it is to convert an app that already is Google Map to use the open page map? Um, not too difficult. If it's a web application, um, Leaflet is a JavaScript API that's relatively easy. Um, about a month ago, um, FEMA, which is the U.S. Disaster Management Agency, sent a website to myself and another hot person using Google Maps, and we responded, this application's cool, but why don't you use OpenStreetMap? And they emailed us two days ago, and they had already switched. And that's like, and that's a government organization. So it's not too difficult. Uh, the, there's a website. Um, that's very helpful for that. Um, so this was written by the OpenStreetMap community to make it easier to switch over. Um, so there's a lot of case studies um, and how to do some basic tasks you would want to do. And then also uh, organizations that provide services around OpenStreetMap as well. Um, so that can really uh, help get you started. Uh, the problem is they say sometimes uh, there's a lot of data vandalism. Actually, it's not as often as you would okay. I'd maybe guess. Um, so the idea is that anyone can edit, but there's also a data working group. And they're responsible for making sure people don't vandalize the data, uh, don't add copyrighted information. Uh, and it actually, it doesn't happen too often. Uh, usually, if there's a mistake and you send the person a message, it wasn't usually uh, them being mean. Usually, they just need help. And people are usually pretty good about that. Uh, there are some places where there's been conflict, um, but they're in the places that you would guess that there would be conflict. Like um, naming things in Israel and Palestine, for example. There's uh, no agreement there. But one of the things is with the way the tags work, is you can say, you can have multiple languages, so you don't have to say there's one right answer. Um, and some islands in the China Sea, you would probably. Yes, that's a problem too. Um, but for the most part, it's actually not too bad. It, it's not that people are going in and putting a lot of fake data in. Um, 4chan heard about OpenStreetMap at one point, and they did start doing some vandalism, but they got bored after a couple hours because um, people can, it, there's tools to revert to. So um, even with trolling, uh, it's not too it hasn't been too too bad. It I guess isn't that much fun to vandalize a map versus maybe a Wikipedia article. <laughs> uh, I would ask about the, the backend of the data store. It is usually only used to call the the something like a key and value and key and value. Uh, in, in my opinion, it's, uh, I guess it's very 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 used. It's like a big data across. What's the, 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 the back end of the database engine? 
<laughs> well, so the funny thing is it uses key values, but then uses a regular relational database. Um, so it uses PostGIS, um, because OpenStreetMap is 10 years old. Um, and so it was more designed around the flexibility of the data model versus the speed of using um, a, a different type of data store. Uh, you can certainly take the data very easily, easily and put it into a key value uh, style database like Mongo or um, CouchDB or something like that. But it actually isn't how the backend uh, works. It was more about the flexibility of being able to say as many things as you wanted about an individual feature. How often the, the image being updated by being specific? Like uh, it really, it really yeah. varies. Um, they've gotten a lot better about, um, they've done a lot more updates, um, but it can, the images can be anywhere from 2009 to 2013. Uh, it really depends on the area. Urban areas tend to get updated a lot more. Um, we uh, sometimes buy imagery, uh, either hot ourselves or people we're working with. So for example, in October I was in Haiphong, Vietnam, and we wanted to map all the transportation information because there was uh, they wanted to do an application uh, around uh, routing by public transit, but there was no base data. So there was also no mapping image, so we bought a picture of Haiphong to use in the project. Uh, there's also a um, project called Imagery to the Crowd. This is specific around disasters. Um, And um, this is actually through the U.S. State Department. And what happens, so the, main, the largest satellite imagery provider in the world is Digital Globe, which is a commercial company. Um, but the U.S. government buys so much of that commercial data that they have a right to all of it. Basically, they're the largest com customer of Digital Globe. So, what that means is the U.S. government is able to share with people working in case of a disaster. So with the Typhoon Haiyan, for example, uh, they provided many, many pictures, um, both of before and after the typhoon, so that OpenStreetMap could be used um, to provide up-to-date data. Uh, there's also other ways to get pictures. Um, balloon mapping is one way. Um, UAVs or drones is another. Uh, there's been some balloon mapping done uh, around some of the flooding here, uh, and also kite mapping. Uh, the one thing that's difficult, especially in uh, Indonesia with the balloon mapping, is that helium is really expensive and really hard to find, since hydrogen is used for most balloons here. But you don't want to blow up a giant weather balloon something that will explode. Um, but so there are other ways to get images. Um, you can also use GPS, um, which you, know, you have in your phone or a hiking GPS unit even. Uh, we use the hiking units a lot just because they're, um, they're hard to break. Um, you can lend them to someone. You don't usually want to lend your phone to someone um, as well. We're uh, working on a we're doing an evaluation to develop an easier to use mobile app um, as part of our project here to um, try to make sure that there's better editing tools that work on 50 or uh, 500 or 600,000 rupiah phones, uh, the inexpensive Androids, uh, to make sure it's really easy um, and imagery is not required. For example, there is a lot of uh, street in the place uh, doesn't have name in the depot. And then I'm search in the Google Map, there's a lot of street name in for depot, for example. And then I edit the open street map data, same like the Google Map, and I'm doing with there the same the same thing until the data uh, in the open street map same like Google Map. Is it a lot of good? No. Because you're copy you you're taking Google's data. It's, it's against their terms of service, basically. 
Um, there's definitely areas where OpenStreetMap is better than Google. And if Google wanted to use the open license, they could use the OpenStreetMap data. But their license prohibits OpenStreetMap for using it. So we're willing to share. <laughs> The, the level of detail. I, I have I have seen people editing in, in, in inside a, a park. For instance, they have uh, they have uh, run the position of each individual tree. Yeah. Things like that. They have position in each tree. Yeah. So uh, are there limits in that? Could you use uh, this map to to track, for instance, the position of each room inside a building? There's been that? some work with indoor mapping, um, but not. A huge amount, um, bas basically just because. Uh, so OpenStreetMap is sort of two-dimensional, so you start thinking about the different levels. So there's not a good tool to edit the data yet. Um, there's been some people who have experimented uh, with a lot of the tree mapping, um, depending on where you are geographically. There's been some imports of trees. Um, I know, um, for example, in Spain, uh, a lot of trees were imported. Here, there's this one guy who really likes mapping trees. So if you see trees in Jakar the Jakarta Depok area, it's probably that guy. Um, but other places, it's people mapping it. Um, there's other things people like to map really detailed. There's someone. There's a project in Germany where someone maps all of the power lines but then all of the voltage, too. Um, I spoke with him. Okay. <laughs> um, but it all depends on your interest and needs, basically. Um, I personally don't usually map below you know, a house or an address, uh, but some people have reasons that they want such detail. And then, uh, are there APIs or something like that to get to statistics? Like, for instance, the number of trees per country? Um, I, not specifically by trees, but you, I, I mean, like, something by country in that way. Uh, but you could, um, you could download the data and do the analysis. Uh, I was going to say, there's also tag info, which gives you statistics on tags. Um, one of the big reasons for this is, since OpenStreetMap is a, um, the de data model is based on the community, if you want to map something, uh, you want to map it the same as everyone else. Because ever, if everyone maps it their own way, uh, let's say you wanted to make a map of all the hospitals in the world, um, if we all map them the same way, it's easy. If we all map them our own way, that's very difficult. So for example, you can search for the word hospital, and it'll tell you all the keys that have the word hospital in it. And you can also see all the values um, that have hospital in them. This might take a bit longer, because um, every hospital would be mapped as hospital. Yeah, so over 100,000 <coughs> Um, we built a tool. 
tool to provide um, extracts of the data, custom extracts. And what it allows you to do is you can create a translation table for data. So you could um, write one, and then when you download the extracts, all the key value pairs will be in whatever language the translation is for. Um, the, it was actually mostly inspired by our work here, because we did, we did a lot of work to make sure information was in Indonesian, um, all of the training materials and the software. But then, once people download the data, um, it's in English again. Uh, so this allows you to tra translate the data, um, as well as select a specific area you want to download. XML, 
Um, there's a compression type for it as well. If you were to download it from a company like Geofabric, you could get it in shapefile, uh, postgis file, um, just the regular XML, uh, a variety of formats. Uh, the export tool I showed also does KML and um, SQLite and that sort of stuff. Sometimes the problem is there's actually too many options and picking the right one. Uh, there's tool so the um, the core OpenStreetMap stuff doesn't really use Python. Um, there's lots of applications built around it, um, and and some use some use Python, um, like the in a safe example that I gave. Um, Uh, so the OpenStreetMap edit, uh, the OpenStreetMap uh, like main editing API is uh, it's a REST API, but it's provided by it's a Rails application. Yeah. Um, if I have a coordinate GPS coordinate in Google uh, Map, uh, will it be exactly the same position in OpenStreetMap or some kind of miss? Should, so if you were to put those coordinates in, they'll be exactly the same. And the reason is um, what you see on the OpenStreetMap website versus Google Maps, um, they use the same map projection. So, so a projection, so you have the Earth and you need to flatten it. Um, a projection is different ways to describe that flattening. Because you give up, um, you can't go from 3D to 2D without losing some accuracy. But they use the same one. Oh. Is there any terrain information, like height in OpenStreetMap? Um, there is some height information. There's not a lot. Uh, when we first started collecting data here, we worked to we wanted to collect building information, and we did the number of stories of the building, what the roof was made of, and the walls. Uh, there's some cities that have detailed height information, because uh, there are applications that want to display the data in 3D. So it's possible. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you can always uh, contact me if you have any questions, or um, Join our Facebook group, or there's contact information on our website as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, selanjutnya sesi.